Hi everyone, Ivan from Webosh here. What is the best way to print out variables in Drupal? Well, you could use the printer or via dump function that comes with PHP, but it's hard to filter through Drupal's arrays because those functions produce a lot of markup. Now, in Devel, you have the DPM and DSM function, but they use an old outdated library called Krumo to print out variables. Now there's a big push to move all of that functionality over to Kint, which is a new modern debugging tool for PHP. So in this video, I'll show you how to use Kint in PHP as well as Twig templates. Okay, so right here, I've got my brand new, freshly installed Drupal 8 site. Now to set up Kint, all you have to do is download the Devel module and enable the Devel Kint sub-module, which comes with Devel. Now, the library itself ships with the Devel module, so you won't have to download some PHP library from some random Git repo. Just download Devel and install the Devel Kint sub-module, and that's it. Okay, now I wanna show you how to use the Kint function as well as the KSM function. So what I'll do is I'll jump into my editor and I will print out the variables array in the preprocess HTML function. So what I'll do is I'll go into themes bar tech and open up the dot theme file. Now do not do this on your on your own Drupal site. I'll, I'm only modifying Bartek because I don't want this video to be an hour long, but never ever modify anything in anything under slash core. So what I'll do is just enter in Kint and let's just add in the variables because because this, because this is what you, you use the DPM or DSM really for, just to print out and see what's in the variables array. Okay, so now if we just go to the home page, you'll straight away see the Kint debug right at the top of the page. And then you can just make your way through the, the beautiful arrays that Drupal loves to generate. But you do have a few classes and a few methods here. And yeah, pretty straightforward. Now the Kint, the, the Kint function prints everything at the top of the page. And what I mean by that is if we go into view source, you will straight away see all of the lovely generated debug messages right at the top of the page. Now the next one, which I wanna show you is KSM. So let me just type in KSM. And if I click into it, you will see that the KSM function uses the Drupal set message. So this means that KSM will generate a dump of the array and then render it using the Drupal set message. Okay, so if we go back to the home page and refresh, you will see that the printed variable is shown in the messages area. And then you can just make your way through all of the lovely arrays. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to collapse and expand all of the classes and arrays because there's a bit of a trick to it. So let's close this. Well, let's just refresh the whole thing. So if you want to see the items below, so let's just say we want to see what's in HTML, you just click on, click on this whole row and you will see the first level down. So if we want to continue, if we want to go into attached, we'll click on the next one and so on and so forth. Now, if you click on the plus, it actually expands everything below. So you may have noticed that straight away, you have attached is, is uh, expanded, library is expanded. But if I go right to the top here and then click on plus, you'll see absolutely everything's been expanded. So, so this is useful for 
when you have to search for a particular array and you know that there's a title array or a type array or sorry, a key. And um, it makes life pretty e a lot easier when you have to search for things instead of just trying to click and find your way through all of the, all of the nested arrays or um, objects. So, so let me just show you that again. If you click on the plus, you'll see everything has been expanded. If you want to collapse everything, just go to the top, click on the bar and then just make your way, sorry, click on the minus and then make your way through, through the array level by level. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to, how to use Kint in your Tweak template. So what I'll do is I'll jump back into my IDE and I'll go into the templates folder and open up page.html.twig. And what I'll do is use, oh, use the curly brackets. So two curly brackets. So you open it up with two curly brackets and close it. And I'll enter in the function kint. And I do know, you can see that there's a page variable being passed. So I'll just add that in. And then if we go to the home page and refresh, you will get this warning. I don't know why I'm getting this warning, but you can ignore it. It only appears when you use the kint function in a tweak template, but everything else still renders perfectly fine. So here you can make your way through the page variable. And again, if you want to expand or collapse absolutely everything, just click on the plus or minus. Now, something to be aware of is that by default, none of these debugging tools for Tweak will work because out of the box, Drupal turns off Tweak debugging. So what you will have to do is turn on the Tweak debugging by doing the following things. So first of all, you should have a development.services.yaml in your Drupal site, and then just come down here and make sure that you have these parameters in. So debug is true, auto reload is true, and the most important is cache is false, because Twig caches all of these templates. So this can be frustrating because often while you're learning Drupal 8 and playing around with Twig templates, you will come here, make a few changes, refresh the site, and then nothing happens. And that's because Twig has cached it. So you have two options. You either run the cache rebuild function every single time you change a Twig file, which is, which is very cumbersome and annoying, or you turn on Twig debugging and also turn off um, caches, the Twig caches. And another thing which I'm doing on all of my Drupal 8 sites is making use of the settings.local. And you will see that the settings.local straight away pulls in this development.services.yaml. So here I've got a settings.local, um, which pulls in the, de the, de the development.services. It also turns off CSS and JavaScript aggregation. You can even go one step further and turn off a lot of caches, but be warned, your Drupal site will run very, very slow if you turn off all of these caches. So turn them off if you're doing a lot of development, but then um, once you're back into standard site building mode where you're clicking around and creating fields and content types, um, turn these caches back on because you, or your Drupal site will be very, very slow. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below the video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. So straight away, you can see all of this information down at the bottom. And this toolbar gives you all sorts of useful information.